I've been in a pretty good amount of good or even great roller coasters, but therefore I've also been in some pretty bad coasters as well. I decided to try and rank those, so this is kind of the result. I'm just doing it right now because I'm probably gonna change this list in a few minutes, but this is my not exactly definitive list of my worst coasters I've ridden as of now. Number 10, Predator at Darien Lake. This is a not a very old wooden coaster, but it's just pretty rough. I also overrode it in the rain, so that probably influences me a bit. But I just remember it wasn't very enjoyable. Kind of a bit boring, actually. Not really any airtime, no forces. It doesn't do much except for being tall and kind of fast. That's why Predator is number 10. Number 9, Zoomer Rang at Lake Compounds. This is another one probably a bit biased towards just because of the conditions I rode it under. I was very young, I was only just tall enough to ride it. So because of that, I was headbanging a bunch on it. And it just, I remember it not being a very great boomerang anyway compared to other ones I've written. Because ones like Sidewinder at Hush Park, I actually don't mind too much. But Zoomerang at Lake Compounds gets into number 9 spot. Number 8, Gemini at Cedar Point. This is one of those cases where if Coast is just like unique or at least tried something different, I'm not, not that much against it. And this is an arrow hybrid coaster, kind of like a huge mine train in a way. So it has steel track and wooden supports. It was very rough, just really jerky, but that's kind of what you expect from arrow coasters. But Gemini just really didn't give much airtime. I just wanted it to end. It just was not enjoyable. Probably not going to ride it again at any point. And that's why Gemini is number eight. Number seven, Nighthawk at Carowinds. Flying coasters are great if they are smooth. This is not smooth and is pretty much a headbanger. Is and also how you orient it compared to the track makes the headbanging so much worse. It was at least a pretty unique coaster because it's Vekoma's first flying coaster and also first well first flying Dutchman coaster obviously. And it at least was trying something different. Luckily the two remaining well one remaining flying Dutchman now is pretty much is a decent amount better, which is Batwing at Six Flags America, but Nighthawk is getting the number 7 spot on this list. Number 6, Runaway Mine Train at Six Flags Great Adventure. One of the oldest existing mine trains, and pretty much considered to be the worst of all of them. It's just jerky, rough, you feel like you're getting thrown around and not in a good way. It's just more painful than fun. It's a good family ride, I guess, if you want your family to hate roller coasters, but that's pretty much it with Monday Mine Train at number six. Number five, Corkscrew at Cedar Point. This is one that, if it was not the first triple looping coaster on the planet, and very new coaster because of that, it would probably be one or two. But because of how historically important it is, and how interesting it is from a historical standpoint, Corkscrew is getting the number 5 spot, and it's just really painful, <laughs> honestly. The airtime hill doesn't give any airtime, just feels like it kind of bumps you around. None of the inversions are very pleasant. It's not a it's not a fun ride and you're just getting banged around the whole time. That's why Corkscrew is number five. Number four, Carolina Cyclone at Carowinds. <sighs> this is another pretty bad arrow looper. It only has four has four loops this time instead of three like Corkscrew does, but still pretty painful. The heel X at the end is probably one of the best parts of the ride actually, because you're actually pulling a few G's. But up to a land, it's just you're getting headbanged. Out of the station you're headbanging, I don't even know how that's possible, but you're just getting thrown around the entire ride. Not very enjoyable experience. That's what makes Carolina Cyclone number 4. Number 3, Hellcat at Clementine Park. This is one that not many enthusiasts have heard of. I was able to ride it twice in June this year, and it is, hmm, it's, it's, an, it's an experience. That's how I'm going to put it. It is the roughest coaster on this list, but it, it has a, it's very interesting with the credits for this. It was designed by Alan Shoki and built by SNS Sansi, which are, which Alan Shoki is obviously a head designer for RMC, and SNS is not a coaster you not a company you consider making coasters. Especially I mean wooden coasters. They're known for their steel coasters. It's just a very rough coaster, incredibly jerky. <laughs> Uh, you're just getting banged around so much. I rode in the front row and the back row. Both of them were just incredibly painful. One of the few coasters that ever actually give me a concussion. <laughs> and it's just not, it's not enjoyable. That's the easiest way to sum up Hellcat. But it's not at number one because it is, just because how unique it is. It has a very unique layout. It has a couple like highly banked turns, airtime hills that don't really give airtime. It's just a very weird coaster. 
If you can ride it at some point, I do recommend it. It actually goes for all the rides on here. If you just can ride for the credit, then do it. But Hellcat is just one that you kind of need to experience at some point. Number two, Anaconda at King's Dominion. Oh, this is a very infamous coaster. It is infamous for being one of the most rough and headbanging inducing coasters in the United States. And it lives up to the reputation. You... Your head is just feels like it's been destroyed by the end of this ride. It is just 90 seconds of pure pain. Your ears are just getting slammed against that headrest the entire ride. It's not enjoyable. Not a lot of fun, and I've only ridden it twice. I usually ride it each- I, usually, I was playing a ride each time I went to King's Dominion, but third time I went, I said no, I'm not riding that. And that brings us to number one. My definitive worst coaster I have ridden. Mind Eraser at Darien Lake. I have ridden a bunch of Vacom SLCs, but this one is definitely the worst. This one's like Fly the Great Oyster, I actually don't mind too much. I found that one actually be pretty fun, but Mind Eraser is just not enjoyable at all. <laughs> there, there's no redeeming qualities to this ride. It's a clone that there's so many more of. N some of them are decent, this is definitely the worst. It's just not maintained very well from what I saw. It broke down like twice into one day I was there. It was just not a good int experience. It takes a while to get to. Like I said, there's no redeeming qualities about this ride. That's put Mind Racer at number one on my worst coasters I've ridden as of mid-July 2019. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be doing more videos soon, so like, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you really like what I do for some reason. But thanks for watching.